Hi, I'm Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back for another vidcast. You're going to love this one. I'm here with Larkin Van Horn, who, oh my God, her work is absolutely wonderful. I love your stuff. Oh, You're really you. great. <laughs> thank you. Um, tell me, tell me about some of the work that you do, uh, you've done over time. I love these shattered circles is what you called them. Right. They started in 2003 as a uh, series. Uh, I ended up making about 50 of them. They were like potato chips. I just couldn't stop. Uh, but you take a circle and blow them up and then put them back together just as if they exploded and oh you were gosh. trying to reassemble the pieces. They're just gorgeous. Thank and, you. And I'll bet you, you teach this and people have a I great do. time doing it. Oh, it's a very fun class. Not so, a lot of heavy-duty skills required. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on in this piece? This is a piece I started uh, for the Journal Quilt Project, and uh, the theme was Earth, Air, Fire, and Water, and this is another take on fire. It's two different techniques combined. It's right. the shattered circles underneath a layer of silk organza, which is then oh. texturized over the top. So it's two of my favorite techniques combined. So what is the organza technique that you were talking about? I hand dye silk organza, lay it over the hand dyed uh, cotton backing, no matter whether it's plain or a shattered circle, and I cut it oversize right. so that while I'm doing the stitching, it just sort of wrinkles and crinkles as I go and oh creates more layers of color, more depth. Ooh, oh, that sounds so neat that it, it just kind of puckers. It does. Uh, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. In yeah. this case, wrinkles are good. Wrink wrink wrinkles <laughs> are good. <laughs> Now, I think one of the things you are known for the most is probably your beading because your beading is exquisite. My favorite pieces in the Sakwa exhibit are your three pieces. Oh, bless you, my I dear. I love those. Thank They're you. just wonderful. How do you go about designing those and what's going on in your head when you're making those with the beading? The beading always comes after the background. So the background has to happen first. And usually it's a piece like this one where I've done again that silk technique and it's been stitched within an inch of its life. That's my new technical term for over, over quilting. It's I stitched love within an inch of its life. Let me just be clear here. There is silk organza over the entire piece here? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's it's, great. And it's then layered up just like a quilt but with one extra layer on top. Right. And your quilting is gorgeous by the way too. Thank you. So I quilt this and whatever is coming up in my head while I'm doing the quilting is where the eventual beading comes in. Interesting. Do you pre-plan your quilting? Never. You I'm just a, go with the flow? Yeah, I'm oh. a fly by the seat of my pants that's, girl. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I quilt this and then I go to my bead stash and I look for a central piece that can be the focal point of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So up to that point, I've basically been creating background to set off the right, beading. Right. So then I find a piece like this stone donut or, or a piece of glass or something, and that placement then determines what happens with the rest of the beading. Right. So you're not even really pre-planning that. You're just saying, nope. Let's go to the bead stash and see what works. Exactly. And, oh, what are we going to put around that? And it's a good excuse for a huge stash. Okay, so that's a good question. H how big is your stash? Is it a bookcase or shelves or? Um, I have five cabinets that are 14 by 14 with one inch drawers. Ooh. And the reason I have five is because I don't have room for six. I really Aww. need another one. You know, the kitchen's available. Well, I've already taken over the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, so you have your central medallion piece on there mm -hmm. uh, that you've chosen, and then what happens? Well, then I'm ready to start the beading, and the primary beading is just such that it accentuates the main quilting line. So all I've done here is stitch right on top of my quilting line with beads. And I see you have bugle beads with seed beads and then just dots of seed beads do and making lines. And exactly, and some of the more complicated pieces you can put other shapes of beads like cubes and rondelles and lots of other shapes yeah and it gives it even more texture and oh I'm gosh. all about texture texture is a good thing <laughs> texture sparkly good. textures oh, even better <laughs> you bet <laughs> yeah yeah well let's take a look and see how you go about doing your beading sure um, the red beads are already on this and now I'm going to add some green just because the complementary colors just shriek that they need beading one of my favorite stitches is the back stitch and it's probably the most used of the beading stitches. 
Okay, let me interrupt you here one second. Yep. Are you, this is the back of the quilt or this will have a back? This, this will, will have an additional back. Okay, that's on. good to know. So it's okay to have your knot in the back. Sure. And yeah. then what kind of thread are you using? Uh, this is Nymo, and, um, but it, any of the nylon beading threads will be just fine. Right. Um, you want a nylon beading thread rather than a standard sewing thread because some beads, like the bugle beads I'm using, are silver lined and with that silver tarnishes it'll rot your thread and your beads will fall off. Oh, interesting point. Yeah. Not a good thing to happen. Not a good thing. And it looks like you're using a really long thread. Oh, well, you know, most quilters would consider this a really long thread, I suspect. And you know, and my grandmothers would be appalled, you know. They, their idea was the, a long thread was the sign of a lazy stitcher. They'd be appalled. So and I say do whatever works. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, use the longest thread you can manage, and then you don't have to thread these teeny yeah. little needles all that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm picking up a combination of seed beads and bugle beads. And bugle beads are the bad boys of the bead world because they're very sharp and they'll cut your thread. Okay. So I put a seed bead on either end to protect it. Oh, interesting. Then all you do is lay this down and tap the beads into place. You want them snug, but not crushed. Okay. Okay. You want them to lay flat. Want them to lay flat. Uh -huh. Your needle goes back down. Uh -huh. And then, just for security, I'm going to go back here and go through those three again. Oh, that's great. That must make it... It anchors the beginning of the line, and it keeps that end stable. Okay. Now, I'm ready to pick up some more beads. I just came out of a seed bead. So my next bead is a bugle, seed, bugle, seed, and I'm ready to put them down again. And see, I'm just following one of my quilting lines. Right. We'll tap those into place, down, and this time I'm going to come back and go through three beads again. So I go through these last three but not all four, because I'm always going into and out of a seed bead. That's your mantra oh, for this. That's good. Yeah. That's good. If you ever find yourself coming out of a bugle bead, you know you've made a little mistake. Okay. And you just keep following that right along till the end of the line. Another thing to remember is when to stop. Right. Because I've got to put a seam here. Oh, right. So I have right. to stop I when that. I get to about a little over a quarter of an inch from the edge. Right, because you wouldn't want beads in the seam allowance. Mm -hmm. That could do Brilliant. nasty things to your oh, machine. So yeah. Yeah. And it's, it looks like it's really nice because you can make curvy lines that oh. way by limiting the number of beads instead of doing, you know, ten beads at a time. Exactly. And you don't want to use really long bugle beads because they don't bend. No, I guess they wouldn't. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of your pieces here. So here you have a book cover. This is a journal cover that I made. Uh, I love to write and sketch and carry books around with me, and I see no reason why they shouldn't be beautiful books. Absolutely. Yeah. This one was from uh, the Journal Quilt Project from 2003. I did 12 of these, and they all had a different figure shape on them. Mm. So I did different backgrounds and different figures the whole year. Cool. And there's another one here from that same series. This was the very first crinkled silk project I did. You know, you're not just using just seed beads and bugle beads. It no. looks like there's a wide variety of little leaves and little flowers and, yep. and little some squares. Of, some of these are contemporary beads, and these are nail heads from the 1910s and 1920s. Oh so I collect gosh. vintage beads, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you must have a good time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's the rule. If we aren't having a good time, then let's go find something else to do. That's right. I yeah. agree. And these are also part of the journal project. These are from 2006. And I, the series I chose that year was Windows and Doors. Oh, yeah. So I chose a long pile of different window and doors shapes to and work with. Yeah. And again, just playing with backgrounds and then what to do with the beading. Now, I am noticing that these do have a little bit of weight. Is there, they do. Is there a maximum or is there a way to support the beads? If I were going to cover the entire surface with beads, right. I would use a, uh, a very heavy, stiff interfacing instead of batting. 
Okay. Just to give it some more support. In this case, these will eventually be mounted on linen and then wrapped around stretcher bars. Okay. So they don't sag and bag. That's a really nice way to mount them. I think so. Yeah, and I'll bet it looks really good too. It looks great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the pieces behind us, you want to tell us about some of them? Sure. There are a couple more pieces here from the figure series and uh, this one from the window series. Here's my, my shattered circle. This is the one that's on my business card. I just yes. think that one turned out brilliantly. Yeah. And these other three are a new series that I've started hoping to write a book about, combining the beauties of fused quilting with beaded medallions and mm. creating the appropriate backgrounds for those. I did notice on your website that um, you don't use necessarily traditional things. You use things like branches yeah. <laughs> and, and chain. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and little bits of broken jewelry and watch parts and any old thing I can lay my hands on yeah. is fair game. If it's got a hole in it, it's a bead. Yeah. Well, you're right. And if it doesn't, you could probably drill one. Yeah. <laughs> or my husband could. <laughs> yeah. And your jewelry is uh, spectacular. Thank you. How long does it take to make something like this? This particular piece I finished in a month, but only because I was down with pneumonia and that was the only thing I had energy for. And your bracelet. Let's take a look yep. at your bracelet. Oh, just gorgeous. Other than that, it's 20 minutes here, half an hour there, a month or two, and it gets done. Yeah. Now, you did mention books. You do have a couple of books, right? I do have a book and a pattern. Okay. Um, um, I wrote a book about beading on fabric. It's a reference book right. rather than a project book. It's got all the stitches oh gosh, and great. what you do with them then is up right. to you. Right. Uh, I also wrote a pattern about making fabric vessels. They are large or small three-dimensional vessel shapes, yeah. vases and things. So and some garment patterns. Wow, yeah. you are one busy lady. Very busy. And you're traveling and teaching as well. I am. Yeah. I am. I love to travel. I don't get wigged out by the uh, vagaries of the airports. And, uh -huh. You just you know, do what you got to do, right? You just right? go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let me throw you a curve. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, what is your life philosophy? My life philosophy? Um, I think that you should do whatever you can to the best that you possibly can, engaging your head and your heart and your hands. Oh, I love that. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this with me. And I, I know they're going to love seeing how to do this beating stuff. Oh, absolutely. And it's so much fun. It is so much fun. Yeah. And thank all, all of you for joining us. And I hope you'll come back next month and see what happens to you then. Thanks for being with me.